the glorious Quran. All chapters are appropriate, but this is a very appropriate chapter for today's session as the month of Ramadan Mubarak is coming. And this is one of the central chapters when it comes to late the night of power. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim Bismillah Rahman Rahim Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr Verily we have sent it this Quran down in the night of Al-Qadr In the first verse Allah Rabbul Izzat has used the word Qadr Qadr means greatness, haughtiness, magnificence So because the night of power it is a magnificent night, it's a haughty, haughtiness night, it's a very splendorous night. That's why Allah Rabbul Izzat, that's why the name of this chapter is given after, the, after this word, Qadr. Now, what is the means of revelation for this? There are a few rawayat, there are a few variations. There are a few variations for the means of revelation for this chapter of the glorious Quran. A few, I will mention three. And why is it that sometimes for one verse there are a few variations? There are a few means of revelations. Sometimes there are a few means of revelations for one verse. Sometimes what happens is that a few events, a few incidents happen and then accordingly, accordingly a, a, a chapter or a verse of the glorious Quran is revealed because all the incidents that happened or all the events that happened they had some similarity and they had some type of similarity so because of that similarity Allah is just waiting for appropriate time because it is in the knowledge of Allah Rabbul Izzat what unfolds so a few incidents you can say get together a few few incidents unfold and then suddenly Allah Rabbul Izzat reveals a few verses of the glorious Quran and in this case Allah Rabbul Izzat reveals a chapter of the glorious Quran which is called the chapter of Qadr, Surah Al-Qadr. Now, it is said that once this is the first narration, this is the first variation, that once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was contemplating, he was contemplating of the ummats of the past. He was contemplating that of their long lives and of their excessive a'mal salihah He was contemplating. That Allah gave the p nations of the past, Allah Rabbul Izzat gave them long lives. And because of these long lives, when you've got a long life, you've got more time to please Allah Rabbul Izzat. You've got more time to engage in a'mal saliha. So when the Prophet ﷺ started to contemplate, he realized that the average age of my ummah, the average age span of my ummah is 60, 65 years. Compared to the ummahs of the past, it is nothing. So when the age is, when the average age span of my ummah is nothing compared to the age span of the previous ummah, how can my ummah supersede the ummahs of the past in relation to A'mal Salah? There's no chance. If they lived a thousand years and the ummah of this, and the ummah of the Prophet is living 70 years, even a hundred years, the A'mal are nothing compared to a thousand years. Yes? So the Prophet when he contemplated and when he analyze this he became sad he became he said how can my ummah supersede the ummahs of the past so Allah Rabbul Izzat revealed this verse of this chapter of the glorious Quran that I have given your ummah one night that is equivalent to a thousand months and the meaning of this is that if a person is continuously engaged in the ibadah for a thousand years and a person on the other hand he engages in the ibadah of the night of power this person will supersede because Allah Rabbul Izzat says it is khayrum min al fishar it is greater than a thousand months a greater now what is the limit of greater khayr min al fishar it is more than a thousand months now what is what is the what is the you can say number for more what magnitude is meant here only Allah Rabbul Izzat knows. Only Allah Rabbul Izzat? Only Allah Rabbul Izzat knows the magnitude. Allah just said it is better than a thousand months of ibadah. Right. Now, so if a person, he engages in ibadah ten nights in, ten, in ten nights of his life. How many? Ten, ten nights of his life. And these nights are the late in the night of power. This is equivalent to 833 years and four months. 
So if a person only engages in ten nights of these, of these nights of power, for instance, if we just say, for the sake of argument, 27th is the night of Laylatul Qadr. For the sake of argument, we say 27th is the night of power. A person, Allah gives him a lifespan which he, in, in which he experiences 10 years. And in these 10 years, he experiences 10 Ramazan. In these 10 Ramazan, he engages in the ibadah of the, he engages in, the, in ibadah in the night of power on the 27th. So if doing ibadah for 10 years in the night of power is equivalent to 833 years and four months. The, another variation to this means of revelation, the, uh, the other variation, what is it? It is that the Prophet وسلم, he mentioned a person of Bani Israel. What did he do? He mentioned a person of Bani Israel that engaged in the ibadah of Allah Rabbul Izzat for a thousand months. He engaged in the ibadah for Allah Rabbul Izzat or he was in the path of ibadah or in the path of Allah Rabbul Izzat for a thousand months. When the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned this to the Sahaba, the Sahaba became perplexed and bamboozled. They became surprised. They became anxious that, look, this person, he worshipped Allah Rabbul Izzat for a thousand years and our lifespan is only 65 years maximum. And in these 65 years, if you divide these 65 years, one third of your life is in sleeping. One third of your life is making a livelihood. So you only got one third of your life where you can do the ibadat of Allah Rabbul Izzat. Yes, in reality. In reality, you only, look, one, when you are asleep, you can't do the ibadat of Allah Rabbul Izzat. When you are working, you cannot do the ibadat of Allah Rabbul Izzat. So whatever time is left after that, you can only do the, iba, the ibadat of Allah Rabbul Izzat. Whereas Allah Rabbul Izzat, the Prophet of Allah is mentioned in a person of Bani Israel, that without even blinking, he worshipped Allah Rabbul Izzat for a thousand years. When the Sahaba heard this, they became grief-stricken. They became sad that these people of the past, the Ummuts of the past, will supersede us when it comes to A'mal al We can never supersede. Our, we are tied up in such a, we are tied up in this dunya where we are surrounded by needs. Where we are surrounded by needs. That's why we have to really think, something I'm going to mention today. We have to really think that this time where we are sleeping, the time when we go to work, or the time when we are not doing the ibadat of Allah Rabbul Izzat, what should our angle of thinking be? Because we don't want this time to be wasted on the Day of Judgment. We want to benefit from this time. Because the greatest bounty which Allah Rabbul Izzat has given to mankind, to man, to the human being, it is time. There's not a greater gift than time. Iman is after. If there's no time, there's no dimension. Where is Iman going to come from? Time is a bounty. That's why Allah will ask about this. That's why we go to work. I mentioned this in my in my class, lesson last night, that we have to change our angle of thinking. We eat, we change our angle of thinking. We defecate, we change our angle of thinking. Even we defecate, we change our angle of thinking. We go to sleep, we change our angle of thinking. We go to work, we change our angle of thinking. What is our angle of thinking? What am I am doing? I'm doing it, putting Allah Rabbul Izzat in front of my life. Allah is in front of my life. After whatever comes after that, I'm doing it to please Allah Rabbul Izzat. I'm going to work, I'm only going to work, but I've got responsibilities. I've got a family, I've got children, yes? And the process says, if you've got a family, you've got a wife, you are responsible for their needs. So if I'm going out to work, I'm fulfilling this injunction of, the, of Sharia. What am I doing? I'm fulfilling this injunction of Sharia that I have to fulfill the needs. And at the same time where I'm fulfilling the needs of Allah Rabbul Izzat, in this process, I cannot displease Allah Rabbul Izzat. I cannot do an act of haram while I am making a livelihood for my family. I can't do an act of haram. Now, if I don't do an act of haram, I am loyal to my boss or my workplace. And this is my angle of thinking. This is my near. I'm doing all this because my family is my responsibility. On the day of judgment, I am accountable. You, the eight hours you spend at work will be ibadah. When we will be resurrected on the day of judgment, we will be perplexed. We will be bamboozled that so much reward, our Allah didn't even do this. What is this the reward of? What is this the result of? Allah will say, this is the result of your niyyah. That's why all the muhaddisin, including Imam Bukhari, rahimahumullah, when the, he starts his jami, uh, jami ul Bukhari, he mentions a hadith, innama al-a'malu bin And what is the reason? The muhaddithun have mentioned ample reasons. The muhaddithun have mentioned many reasons. I haven't got time to dwell into the reasons, but I will mention one. One reason why they mention this hadith is that a person's niyyat, it super supersedes a person's actions. A person's niyat, it supersedes a person's limitations when it comes to action. There's only a limit, there's only a limit thing, limited things of, limited things you can do physically. 
There's only a limited things you can do physically. Yes, like for instance, you can't climb the. Can you? Can you? Uh, can you go to the sun? Can you go to the moon? You can't. But if you make your intention, I want to. Can anyone stop you? Now, you, your livelihood. For instance, you're in a couple of thousand dollars or a couple of million, million thousand dollars. You make intention that whatever money Allah gives me, I will spend. For instance, I will spend two times more than what I earn. This is my intention. If Allah gives me two times than what I earn, I will spend in the path of Allah Rabbul I haven't got two times more, but I made the intention, Allah will give you reward. What will Allah Rabbul Allah will, Even though as far as application is concerned and executing that niyat is concerned, I'm limited. I'm limited. I want to help everybody. Everywhere, everybody who has been oppressed in the dunya, I want to help. But can I help? I'm limited. But if I make my intention and this need, our life, I have the power, you give me the power to help everybody. Allah will give me the intent. Allah will give me the reward. That's why there was a person in Bani Israel. He was, Bani Israel at that time were experiencing a drought. And he just passed a lump of soil. A little mountain of dust or clay or soil. He was just passing. And he made the intention. He said, oh Allah, if this mountain of soil Little you can say mountain of soil. He said, if this mountain soil, if, the, if these were grains, I would distribute this amongst the poor and the needy. I would, at that time, Allah Rabbul Izzat revealed, of, revealed upon Musa alayhi salatu salam, go and inform that person whatever intention he, had, he has made, I am giving him the reward as if that lump of soil or that mountain was grains and he has distributed in my path. I have given him the reward. So nothing can supersede a person's intention. That's why the intention should be big. Even though we are limited in executing those intentions. Because as far as our dimensions are concerned, we are very limited. But this intellect is not limited. This brain is not limited. The wonders this brain can think of is not limited. In your dream, you can go to Amer America in one night and return. You can go to the moon and return. You can go to the sun and return. But physically you cannot. So when it comes to making an intention, the intention should be big. They should supersede our physical capacity. So that's why when the Sahaba heard this, they said to the Prophet, oh Allah, one third of our life, we've only got one third of our life where we can do the ibadah of Allah Rabbul Izzat. We are very limited. So the Prophet, when he heard this, when the Prophet ﷺ heard this, he became sad as well. He said, this is a valid point my companions are making. The Prophet ﷺ said, this is a valid point my companions are making. Yes, the Prophet ﷺ threw his head down in sadness. Allah Rabbul Izzat revealed this chapter of the glorious Quran. Don't worry, I'm giving you a night that is greater than, that is greater. Keep this in mind always. Sometimes we make a big mistake when we mention this chapter or even some speakers, we say, we, we always emphasize on a thousand months. Allah is not emphasizing on a thousand months. He's emphasizing greater than a thousand months. And what is greater, there's no limit. In the eyes of Allah, when, it come, when Allah comes to give, given, there's no limit. Allah is Allahu Akbar. His reward is Akbar as well. His reward is Akbar. There's no limit to that. So Allah Rabbul revealed this chapter and said, don't worry, tell your companions that I'm giving them a month better than a thousand months. There's another uh, variation and that variation is that the Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned four prophets that worshipped Allah Rabbul Izzat for 80 years continuously without even blinking. Without even blinking they worshipped Allah Rabbul Izzat for 80 years. Now when the Sahaba heard this they became anxious and said 80 years we cannot do this. Our lives is not 80 years. We will not live for 80 years. We maximum live for 60, 70. Even if we do live to, till 80 we will have no strength to do. So they became sad. They said to the Prophet, so how can we supersede such people? This chapter of the glorious Quran was revealed. What is it? Inna anzalna fi laylatil qadr. Verily, we have sent it, this Quran, down in the night of Al Qadr. Qadr means a haughtiness night, a great, a magnificent night. All right. Now, I mentioned at the start, I mentioned at the start that these are three variations. There are many other variations to the means of revelation for this chapter. I have mentioned that at the start. What is the reason? The reason is sometimes three, four incidents, they are very similar. So Allah Rabbul Izzat is waiting for an appropriate time. When that appropriate time comes, Allah Rabbul Izzat reveals a verse or a chapter. And in this case, Allah Rabbul Izzat revealed a chapter called Surah Al-Qadr. Now, the Prophet said, this is a blessing. 
blessing for my ummah. The night of power is a blessing for my ummah. Allah Rabbul Izzat has honored my ummah by giving them the night of power. Allah has not given this night of power to any ummah of the past. And it's obvious when you understand and when you study the means of revelation, they didn't need the night of power. The reason being is Allah had given them long lives. When it came to us, Allah Rabbul Izzat has shortened the lives. That's why Allah Rabbul Izzat has given, the, given us the night of power. All right, now, Allah Rabbul Izzah says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Verily, we have sent it, this Quran down in the night of Al Qadr. Number one, Allah says, Anzalnahu, Allah is attributing the, this revelation, the revelation of the Quran to Himself. He is attributing the revelation of the Quran to Himself. What is Allah saying? We have sent it down. Who? Allah is saying, We have. Why? The rubbish the people were talking, the rubbish the people were talking about the Quran in Mecca, or the things they were saying about the Quran, Allah Rabbul is saying, whatever you are saying, good or bad, keep this in mind. That this, this is a book which I have revealed. This is a book which I have revealed. These are not the words of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. These are my words. And to emphasize and hyperbolize on this, Allah says, Inna, there is no doubt. To hyperbolize and to emphasize on this, Allah says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul Verily, the word inna is to hyperbolize something. That's what, and the meaning in English is verily. Verily, we have sent it, this Quran, down in the night of Al Qadr. Then Allah Rabbul Izzah says, uses the word anzalna. Now, there's a question I'm going to pose you. The Quran was revealed, there's a Allah is saying the Quran was revealed in the night of power. Allah is saying the Quran was revealed. But we see when we study the seerah, we study the Quran, the Quran was not revealed in the night of power. It was, it was revealed over a period of 23 years. The Quran was revealed over a period of 23 years. So what is the meaning of this verse? Allah is saying the Quran was revealed in the night of power. And when we see and study the life of the Prophet وسلم, we come to this conclusion that now the Quran was not revealed in one night, it was not revealed at one go, it was revealed over a period of 23 years. So what is the meaning of this? So the meaning of this is that before you can understand this, you have to understand a difference between two words. One is inzal and one is tanzil. The word inzal means for something to be revealed at once, at one go. Tanzil means, and Tanzil means for something to be revealed slowly, gradually. So what is the meaning of this? Allah is saying the Quran was revealed in the night of power. So what is the meaning of this? When we study the seerah, we see it's revealed in 23 years. The meaning is the Quran was revealed or the Quran ascended or the Quran was placed from the first, from the preserved tablets, which is called Lawhe Mahfuz, and it came to the worldly sky in the night of power at once and then from the worldly sky it descended upon the prophet over a period of 23 years as need as need, as as need, as, as time needed as time needed whatever incident was taken place or, or if, if revelation was needed revelation would descend from the worldly sky so from the preserved tablet to the worldly sky the quran descended in one go and then from the worldly sky upon the Prophet Sallallahu the Quran descended over a period of 23 years as it was needed whatever the need of the time was the verses were revealed sometimes verses were revealed sometimes chapters were revealed sometimes many chapters as one time were being revealed many chapters keep this in mind many chapters at one time were being revealed and as chapters and verses were being revealed the Prophet Sallallahu would Place those verses and those chapters accordingly to how we read the Quran today. The order of the Quran, whatever order we see today, this is the order the Prophet ﷺ established. This is the order the Prophet ﷺ established. It's not Hazrat Usman or Abu Bakr Sadiq established this tartib. So whatever verses were being revealed, for instance, the Prophet used to say, put these verses in that chapter. Now a whole chapter is revealed. The Prophet said, put this chapter before that chapter, or put this chapter after that chapter. Put these few verses in that chapter. So this is called Tawqifi. The order of the Quran is Tawqifi. What does Tawqifi mean? 
Tawqifi means it is from Allah as well. Some people question whether the order is not, because later on Sayyidina Usman, he, he organized the order, or Abu Bakr Siddiq organized the order. This is wrong. The Prophet in his lifetime, he organized the order. As verses were being repealed, or many verses were being revealed, or chapters were being revealed, the Prophet would say, now at one time, you got to understand the whole Quran was open in front of the Prophet at once. Many chapters at one time have been revealed here and there. So, the, so whatever verse used to be revealed, the Prophet says, wherever its place was appropriate, the Prophet would say, put it there, put it there, put, it, this, put these verses in that chapter, put this chapter after that chapter. Why? Because this was the order of Allah Rabbul Izzat as well. This is how you can say in the world of spirits, or when Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam, when he embraced the Prophet sallam in the cave, this is, the, this is that strength that Allah Rabbul Izzat gave to the Prophet sallam, that he understood where to put what. So keep this in mind. We're not going into how the Quran was collected or how the Quran was compiled. But just keep this in mind. At one go, many chapters were open. Many chapters were being revealed. And what, wherever any chapter, wherever any verse was appropriate the prophet would place that verse at that place all right so the difference between inzal and tinzil tinzil means slowly inzal at once what is lower mahfuz anybody know what the lower mahfuz is in english is called the preserved tablets what are the preserved tablets i'll tell in, i'll tell you in short you're not going to find this people many a times you hear the word preserved tablets preserved what is preserved tablets preserved tablets is Ilm alahi azli, the knowledge of Allah Rabbul Izzat. What is it? It is the knowledge of Allah Rabbul Izzat. In, the knowledge of Allah Rabbul Izzat is preserved in the preserved in the preserved tablet. It's the knowledge. What knowledge? The knowledge of what will unfold. The knowledge of what will unfold in this dunya. This is called lawhe mahfuz. All right. Now, Allah says, "Wama adraka laylatu." We have Reveal this Quran in the night of power. Now, as far as the night of power is concerned, there's a lot of difference of opinion amongst the Mufassirun and the Muhaddisun. What is the night of power? Some say it is, it only comes once in a year, and the month is not, and the month is not specified. Once in a year, it can be any night. So these people who have this view, they don't confine the night of power to. Ramadan al-Mubarak. They say it could be any night in the year. Some say the night of power is in the month of Ramadan al-Mubarak. The majority of the ulama, muhaddithun and mufassirun say the night of power is in the, is in the month of Ramadan al-Mubarak. It's amongst one of, one of the nights of Ramadan al-Mubarak, the 29 or 30 nights. And out of these, a majority say it is not the night of power is amongst the last 10 nights. It is, it is either one of the last Ten nights. And what is the reason that Allah Rabbul Izzat kept this ambiguous? What is the hikmat and logic? The logic is if Allah Rabbul Izzat told us that this certain date, this month, in this month and on this date, this is the night of power, we would only worship Allah in that night. Allah didn't want us, Allah wants us to make an effort and Allah wants to make Allah wants to see who is striving to please him. So Allah Rabbul Izzat has left the window open. Worship me every night. Worship and try to find the night of power. So if Allah told us, and there's another reason as well, that if Allah did tell us, it's not necessary that everyone will engage in ibadah. Only a few will, or you can say half the ummah. Now the half of the ummah that is not engaging in the ibadah of Allah Rabbul Izzat, what will the sin be that they will be occurring? Allah has told them of such a great night, instead of worshipping Allah Rabbul Izzat, they are committing sin. What is the, what is the repercussion and the consequences these people will occur? In this dunya and in the hereafter. What is the wrath that they will attract of Allah Rabbul Izzat? That's why Allah Rabbul Izzat kept a secret as well. That at the same time Allah Rabbul Izzat has mercy when he looks at the weak. That it's not necessary everyone will worship me. He knows. That's why he's kept it a secret. That if for instance he does tell us or Allah did tell us through the Prophet Sallallahu Now a person he's deprived of that night. He misses that night. Or he couldn't do much in that night. He'll feel very sad. What will he feel? He'll be despondent. Ya couldn't worship Allah Rabbul Izzat. So Allah Rabbul Izzat that kept his secret, it can be any night throughout. That's why there are some scholars, some scholars, and these are those scholars that worship Allah every night. They say Laylatul Qadr is every night in a Muslim's life. Laylatul Qadr is every night in a moment's life. If Allah gives that tawfiq for a person to stand up and perform two rakat nafal, this is Laylatul Qadr for him. What is this? Laylatul Qadr for him. Every night. Because at the end of the day, for Allah, Laylatul Qadr, 
being greater than a thousand months or later to Qadr in itself, it's nothing for Allah Rabbul Izzat. Allah just wants to see who is, makes the effort. What is the status of Laylatul Qadr? Allah says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلُتُ الْقَدْرِ And what will make you know what the night of Laylatul Qadr is? Allah Rabbul Izzat, He mentions two virtues of this night. We're going to try to wrap this up quickly. He mentions two virtues of this night. Number one, the night of Al-Qadr is better than a thousand months. What is it? One virtue. Worshipping Allah in that night is better than worshipping Him a thousand months. I 83 years and four months. The second virtue of this month, Therein descend the angels and the Ru Jibreel al -Islam, by Allah's permission with all decrees. Two virtues of Laylatul Qadr. Number one, it is greater than a thousand months. Number two, this is a night where Ruhul Amin, Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salatu waslam, he descends with all his army on the earth to give salam, to send peace upon the believers. Now we're going to wrap this up very quickly. Now there's a sign that in this night, Ajeeb. In this night, this is, we're going to wrap, try to wrap this up very short. In this night, Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salatu salam, he does musafa with every believer. What does he do? Salam with every believer. He descends, the first person to descend is Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi, and then all the malaika descend after him, behind him. Yes, and then after this what happens is that these angels, they are traveling throughout the world. Two narrations. One, they are spreading mercy. Number two, the other narration, they are spreading peace. They are spreading peace. Um, say that it is said regarding Sayyidina Jibreel, he even does musafiha, he even does salam to the believers. And there's a sign for this in the hadith. How do we know that Sayyidina Jibreel has done salam with us? The Prophet has mentioned three signs. So anyone who experiences these three signs, it is a sign. It is evidence that Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salatu salam has done musafia with this person. Number one, what is the sign? Number one sign is that a person, he gets goosebumps. Number one. Number two, his heart becomes soft. And number three, tears shred from his eyes. If a person experiences this, in any night of Ramazan, especially in the night of power, it's a sign that Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam has done salam with this person. This is a statement of the Prophet sallam, not my statement. It's not a statement of any wali or any buzrag or any sheikh. It's the Prophet sallam, has said this. All right. And then what happened is that now in the morning when Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam ascends to the skies, he opens his wings. It is said green wings. He only opens these wings in this night. That's why in this night, after the following morning, you, do, you don't experience the rays of the sun. This is the result of Sayyidina Jibreel opening his wings. That's why you don't experience the rays of the sun. He has opened his wing. And then all the malaika, they follow Sayyidina Jibreel. How do they follow him? He mentions every frishta, every angel by name. One, one angel by name. They start ascending the skies. And this is how the... Night of power comes to an end. Now, that's why Shaykh Ladisa Mulana Zakriya Rahimahumullah, he has mentioned we should not deprive ourselves from reward of this night. And how we can deprive ourselves is, the Prophet has mentioned many things that these angels do not enter that house. These angels, they do not enter places where people have kept idols. Yes, you can say, um, shara, uh, what do you call these? Where the Hindus go, what do, they, what do you call them? Mandars. Mandars, now what is the mandar? Shrine? No. Temple. Temples, yes. The angels do not enter temples. People who worship the fire. So if there's a specific place for people to worship the fire, the angels do, do not enter these places. Yes, the, the angels do not enter such places where people are impure. The angels do not enter places where there are pictures hanged up. So one person hanging up a picture and he's depriving the whole house. What is he doing? One picture hangs up a house, he deprives them. Then you get Mufti Sahib, we are experiencing some super... Mufti Sahib, we are experiencing some supernatural things at home. Mufti Sahib, we are experiencing this. Mufti Sahib, we are hearing this. We are hearing strange sounds. The result, you know the result of where, why these strange, you are hearing these strange sounds? Because of these pictures. These attract the wrath of Allah, Rabbul Izzat. What do they do? And they invite the jinn in your house. What do they do? 
They invite the jinn in your house and the jinn is evil. And the result of this is that's why you start hearing things. That's why you start experiencing strange things. So if we have any pictures, we have to take these pictures off. Yes, we have to remove these pictures from the walls. That's why the fuqaha have said, if you go to a person's house, you are frank with that person, you have, you, have good, that you have good understanding with that person, you don't have to ask permission to take the pictures off. If you want to perform salah, you just take them off. But if you, that person is going to get offended, you haven't got good relation with that person, what you do, don't pray in front of that picture, pray somewhere else, pray in another room, but don't pray in that room. You know why? Because at one time, you are attracting the rahmah of Allah Rabbul Izzat by praying, and on the other hand, you are attracting the wrath of the angels. What are you doing? Two things. The wrath and rahmat, both are descending. And when both descend, both cannot descend. So what will happen? The rahmah and the wrath, they are both hanging in the middle. They are both hanging in the middle. You will not get... It's like two buses are... Two, tra two cars are colliding. No car is giving the other car away. What will happen? They will collide. On the same token, rahmat and wrath, they will both collide. And when they will both collide, the person in the middle will not benefit. He will not benefit. So remove the pictures. All right. And the, Allah Rabbul has mentioned the second virtue of this night. The reward is up till Fajr. It is not that up till Sun Subah Sadiq. It is not that Allah Rabbul Izzat has limited the reward to 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 1 hour, 2 hour, the whole night. From when? From when the sun sets to when the sun rises to rises all the night so it's not even if a person get five minutes what are some signs of this night some signs of this night is that in the morning you do not experience the rays of the sun in that what you experience at night the night is very cool it is not cool too cold it is not too hot and the sky is very clear some say the water is very sweet in this night as well these are some signs of Laylatul Qadr and in this night what happened is the stars they are not pelted at the shaitan. The stars are not pelted at the shaitan in this night. The stars are not pelted at the shaitan. These are some signs. What is the dua we should make in this night? We're wrapping this up. What is the dua? Sayyidina Aisha Sadiqa radiallahu ta'ala, she reports a dua from the Prophet Everyone should learn this dua before the month of Ramadan starts. Because according to some ulama, like I mentioned, they say the night of power, it is every night of the month of Ramadan al-Mubarak. What is the dua? Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'fu anni. That, oh Allah, you like, oh Allah, forgive me. You love forgiveness. Fa'afu Oh Allah, you love forgiveness. Oh Allah, you forgive me. What a beautiful dua. Few words. This is why Arabic is such a beautiful language. You have to say this in English. You have to, you have to, you have to say so many words. Arabic, Allahumma inna ka'afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. On top of that, this is a concise dua. This is the best dua you can make in this night. Why? This is a dua the Prophet has taught. And there can be nothing better than the dua of the Prophet because the Prophet is inspired by Allah. These are the words that Allah Rabbul Izzah puts in his heart. All right. Now, what can, what one thing we can do in this night is if we, want, if we want full reward of this night, what we can do is, Qazi Sanala, Qazi Muhammad Sanala, Pani Pati Rahmatullah in his tafsir and mazri, he mentions that no one should deprive themselves of the reward of this night. It is very simple. What he says is, just perform Isha with Jama and Fajr with Jama. If you perform Isha with the Jama, it is as if you have worshipped Allah Rabbul Izzah half the night. And if you perform Fajr with Jama, it is like you have worshipped Allah Rabbul Izzah the rest of the night. Yes, so each Salah, it comprises, what does it do? It comprises half of the night. What does it do? It comprises half of the night. That's why Sayyidina Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala, he mentioned, there's a hadith in Timzi reported by Sayyidina Usman Ghani. He said the same thing. He said you perform Fajr, you perform Isha with Jama, in these nights, especially in these nights, you perform Isha with the Jama and you perform Fajr with Jama. It is as if you have performed the whole night in the Ibadah of Allah Rabbul Izzat. So if you only perform Isha, you got reward of half the night. If you only perform Fajr, half of the night. All right. Now, one more thing. The, the summary of the whole chapter, Allah Rabbul Izzat is mentioning the magnitude, the greatness of the Quran. And then he mentions that he revealed this Quran in the night of power. He mentions two virtues of this night. And we've got to keep this in mind that the Quran was not revealed upon the Prophet at one go. It was revealed over a period of 23 years. Where it was revealed at one go, it was from the lower Hamafus, from the preserved tablet to the worldly sky and then from the worldly sky upon the over a period of 23 years some of the faza, some of the you can say this chapter of the glorious quran it has got some spiritual effects as well spiritual benefits if you want to 
strengthen your vision, if you want to strengthen your vision, or if you want to strengthen your iman, or if you want to strengthen the nur of your eyes, write this Surah Al-Qadr on a piece of paper, and then put place this paper in water, and then drink that water. Inshallah, Allah Rabbul Izzat will increase your iman, Allah will increase the nur of your eyes, and Allah Rabbul Izzat will make your eyesight sharp. Allah give you, me, the tawfiq to implement a practice. Wa akhru dawana, alhamdulillah, rabbil alim.